Let's bring in our next guest. That's going to be Dick Bove. He is a financial strategist at Odeon Capital Group. Welcome to the show, Dick. Thank you. Hey, uh, so we had bank earnings today, kickoff of earnings season. It seems like, uh, you know, maybe taking some charges, shoring up their balance sheet a little bit. They got the Basel III rules coming down the pipeline, but it didn't seem like that bad of a quarter for the banks. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, I, I can't agree with you. <laughs> okay, <laughs> basically, you're exactly correct in what you say, that there were a whole bunch of charge-offs which made the numbers lower than they, uh, you know, could have otherwise been. Uh, and those charge-offs uh, will not be there, you know, in the next quarter. But, you know, for two of the banks, Bank of America and Wells Fargo, if you kind of bore into the numbers a bit, you find that their operating business didn't do well at all either. Uh, you know, the only reason why Wells Fargo hit the estimate is because they didn't pay taxes in the quarter. They got a small rebate instead from the government. Uh, but if you take a look at uh, things like loans and deposits, you know, as I say, in both the cases of Bank of America and uh, Wells Fargo, you know, you, you've got to be really careful. In the case of uh, J.P. Morgan, you know, they, they did okay. In other words, when you separate the, the, the wheat from the chaff for those, for those guys, you know, I'd say that they were moderately uh, better in the quarter than, uh, than people expected. So that one is fine. And, and the fourth one, Citigroup, I own that one. Uh, basically, uh, they promised that they would uh, have devastation in the quarter, and they did. They lost a buck sixteen, but I think I think that what they're doing uh, is putting them on track to be, uh, you know, a very successful stock going forward. I, I still believe that the stock will double over the next two and a half years, and it's uh, well worth buying. Yeah, and I kind of want to expand that uh, that discussion on Citigroup because. They're cutting jobs, right? Uh, the CEOs come in there. She's trying to turn the chip around uh, and making some hard decisions. Uh, you know, they had 240,000 employees are cutting 20,000 jobs in the medium term. That means they might not be done. Is that the path for stocks like Citigroup in this space to kind of help shore up and expand and get back to growth? Well, it's it's uh, it's a bigger, bigger issue than that, a much bigger issue than that, I should say. Basically, the banking industry is in trouble. It's not in trouble financially. It's got plenty of money. There's not going to be any bank risk or anything of that nature out there. The problem is that the banks are losing market share and have been losing market share within the financial industry for, you know, three to five years. In other words, they... They are losing market share in making loans to the uh, capital markets industry, to the non-banks. Uh, they're losing uh, the opportunity to hold on to deposits to the money market mutual fund uh, industry. So, you know, they're, they're up against it. And while they're up against it, you know, you've got the government coming down with this new set of what they like to call Basel III endgame rules. And those rules are killers. They're, they're absolutely designed to, to stop banks from growing. Uh, because the government doesn't want to take the risk of insuring uh, all of the deposits in those banks. So, you know, the banks have got to change their operating model. And that's what Citigroup is doing. That's why Citigroup is a standout from the others. And that's because they're not going to rely on, uh, you know, making loans and taking in deposits. They're going to rely on uh, business services to the Fortune 500. They're going to rely on uh, investment banking, which I think will do quite well in 2024. So the reason why I own the stock is basically because it, it's a different model. It's a totally different model than the model that Bank of America and Wells Fargo are pursuing. And I think, therefore, the stock is, is far more attractive. In addition to which, this thing is selling at uh, roughly half of book value, and book value is 100% cash. So it just doesn't make sense in a valuation standpoint either. When you look at, uh, you know, potential headwinds for this industry moving forward in 2024, everybody's expecting that soft landing. Rates have come down from that 5% level on the 10-year uh, in October, you know, to under 4% now. In what environment or what headwinds might there be? Is it a softening consumer that might, might hurt these banks? Or is it uh, a move in interest rates, uh, to, you know, against these banks? Are there any headwinds out there in 2024 that we should be wary of? 
Well, I mean, you, you, you are wary of them and you are seeing them already. In other words, we, we are already seeing an increase in the uh, loan loss provisions uh, of the net charge offs, more, more importantly. Uh, and that's, uh, I believe, associated with uh, credit cards, uh, auto loans and other, uh, you know, consumer activity. Uh, the, the, the interest rate situation, I don't think is going to hurt them one way or the other. Basically, uh, to, to clarify, banks benefit from lower interest rates. The reason why they benefit is because 90% of their assets are financial in nature. So when interest rates go up, the value of their assets go down, their real book value goes down, and the stocks go down along with it. Uh, but, you know, basically, I, I think that there will be no change in interest rates this year. I, I do think that the Fed it w was concerned about that CPI number. And I think that uh, if you took the energy part of the CPI number out, it was up 5.5%. And that's not going to get the Fed to cut anything. But, you know, to get back to your core issue, the banks are in trouble whether these things change or not. In other words, the banks, this will be the third year in a row once these earnings are, are fully in, that the banking industry's earnings will be down from the prior year. Mm -hmm. Three years in a row. Right. Okay, so there's, there, is, there is, as I say, a structural problem in the industry. That problem is competition, which they can't handle, and therefore that's why you've got to be very careful in terms of which bank stock you buy. Yeah, and you said you like uh, Citigroup. You think it may be double. What uh, other names, is there one other name in this space that uh, you know, the investors uh, should get uh, some interest in? Well, on the sell side, you know, I'm, I'm really convinced that uh, Cap One and Ally Financial are two stocks that uh, are going to go much lower. I, they have not reflected anything near what is occurring in the consumer uh, default, a uh, loan default area. The stocks have been going up consistently under the belief that uh, they'll shake it'll be a soft landing these guys will shake off the loan losses there won't be any problem I, I don't believe that I believe that uh, when when their earnings are out in the next few days what you're going to see is some sizable you know write-offs uh, charge-offs you know increases in delinquencies and uh, I would definitely short those stocks all right great discussion here uh, post earnings appreciate it Dick have a great weekend you too. Bye-bye now. All right. That's Dick Bovee, financial strategist at Odeon Capital.